Well, welcome to this uh, sixth international conference that INTI is organizing since its uh, start in 2008. Uh, very happy that you're all here, made the trip in this weather, in this distance for a lot of you. Um, I would like to uh, use my uh, five minutes of uh, welcome to explain a little bit about what INTI does and especially about the, uh, the context of today, about the context of this uh, Shenzhen program. Um, just so it will be very short, you have to bear with me, but um, I hope I will, uh, I will manage to do this. So INTI is a, a think and do tank. Uh, doing research in a kind of practical way to actually contribute to the quality of new cities worldwide. And um, we are dealing with old new towns, so to speak, just like Almere, which is an existing new town uh, for, the, for the last 30, 40 years. But we're also dealing with new new towns. And they are basically in the rest of the world, the areas of the world that are economically growing and that we all know to be Asia and in a growing uh, amount also Africa. Uh, so that's where hundreds of new towns are um, being built now or being planned or still on the, on the drawing table. And what we're actually to do, trying to do with uh, projects like this for Shenzhen is to contribute to the ideas, the visions, the planning and actually the building of these new towns to improve them. So you could ask, why is that necessary? Because <coughs> this is the kind of uh, generic image of these new cities that are being built anywhere, not just in Asia, as you might expect. It, these images come from China, from Korea, from Cambodia, but also from um, uh, Kigamboni, for instance, this is in Africa, is in Tanzania. So you see this new model of new towns uh, proliferating throughout the world. And uh, for us, this, is, this was a, uh, a great cause of alarm because I'm not sure how you look at these images. Some people see spectacular, glossy skyscraper cities, which are kind of inspiring. To me, they're absolutely not. I think these cities are the example of a very old fashioned, uh, outdated, modernist model that consists of a crossover between the Le Corbusier um, city type and the American CBD uh, city with a strong focus on buildings as an island on itself, not on streets, and on car-based traffic and 12-lane highways, etc. So to me, this is a very outfashioned urban model, and still it's proliferating throughout the world. So that is actually the reason that we set up this, uh, this project, New New Towns, of which the Shenzhen um, uh, project is a part. This um, new New Towns project deals with um, the renewal of existing cities, like Almira, and uh, with the um, um, contribution to the design and uh, yeah, to the design of new cities, which still have to be built, future cities. Um, we chose on the different continents a number of cities which are most um, uh, eager and most suitable to be in this uh, program. And as you can see, they're all in somewhere in the global south, which is the part of the world which is the most strongly and fastest urbanizing part of the world. As you know, 50% of world population lives in cities by now, and that will be 70% in uh, 2050. And the major part of this urbanization will take place in the global south, in South America, in Africa, and in Asia. <coughs> so the selection of uh, cities, as you can see, Shenzhen is included, Almere is included, as well as a number of other cities, and we have already started in uh, five cities now. I will give you uh, two examples of uh, the kind of things that we are um, doing. Well, actually, the Shenzhen you know. This is a transformation from uh, an industrial city to a more service-oriented, creative uh, city. This is the topic of all the research uh, projects that we do in, uh, in Shenzhen, and also of the research by design that we, uh, that we have undertaken. Um, underneath you see the Density Syndicate, which is our uh, project in uh, Cape Town, and which deals with uh, a whole other issue, 
um, of the, the city being completely segregated, socially segregated as well as spatially segregated, and uh, the means of density to actually um, overcome barriers, create connections, and make the city more socially inclusive. Well, and apart from those four, which are four cities which are far away, we also have the city of Almere. Uh, with its uh, theme of the, being the green city, as was already explained by uh, Mayor Joritsma, and will also be the topic of uh, one of the next uh, talks by Simone Eysink. <clears throat> so that has everything to do with the background of Almere being planned in the polder from scratch, and the role that uh, uh, green and forest and open space has had from the beginning of uh, Almere on, and will continue to uh, have in the future. So how do we do that? The, uh, you can see that all the themes in the different cities are very different. Uh, still, the method is basically the same. So uh, we work in a way which is uh, uh, always based on local expertise and always with the local parties. Uh, of course, we're, we're not exporting um, uh, Dutch knowledge per se. We're trying to find uh, a means of cooperation with people in Shenzhen, in Cape Town, in Chandigarh, etc. Um, the way that we work is multidisciplinary, so it's not only architecture or urban planning, but especially sociology is a very important part, anthropology, uh, architectural history also comes to the game. Um, and we use different methods uh, of working together. So research by design is a very important one, using uh, design not as the, um, the blueprint for for a building or a city, but as a means for discussion, for negotiation, for exploring possibilities and scenarios. And uh, of course, you have, we're only, not only a think tank, but we also like to do things. Um, this uh, event that is shown over there is the, the Dalang event that was at, in Shenzhen in December uh, last year that Linda organized uh, together with the, uh, the migrant voluntary organizations and the, the migrant culture in uh, Dalang, um, bringing all the uh, excitement of uh, music and skating into the, uh, the architecture biennale. Um, so, um, you could summarize it as um, that we are trying to um, uh, use this so-called the golden triangle of, of government, of uh, industry and education to um, create this, this building, this network of um, education, of scholars and students, of industry, being the, the architects and the urban planners, and of course of government, of the policy makers, to um, not only come up with new visions and ideas, but also uh, find a way to implement them and actually contribute to this improvement of the quality of these new cities. And what we uh, especially try to do, and this is, this is why this day is specifically uh, interesting for us, is we're trying to uh, also find a way how to um, get this knowledge interchanged between the cities of our program. So um, there are some uh, linkages that um, these cities um, wouldn't expect themselves. Like I'll give you two examples. Uh, this is the example of the urban villages, which is a, a very well-known topic uh, for scholars studying the Chinese cities. But um, they also exist in other countries. For instance, in uh, Chamnikar, when we were there, we saw exactly the same phenomenon of um, three or four of these um, uh, urban villages incorporated in Le Corbusier's grid. Uh, but urban village is not uh, a well-known term to uh, Indian uh, practitioners at all. So they were very surprised when we told them about this uh, phenomenon. And not only about its spatial effects, but more um, uh, moreover, the, um, the social and economic synergy that actually exists between these urban villages and the formal city, between the self-organized and the formal city. And I think those kind of topics, um, uh, showing how these urban villages are actually the, the first foothold for migrants coming into the city, but also the place where civil servants from the CBD go to to have their lunch, those kind of uh, synergies are something that is really interesting and uh, that comes out of this uh, research. And the second example would be uh, this. We had um, the presentation of the Cape Town results last month and I think a lot of the conclusions that were drawn by our teams there actually are trans 
transportable to these other cities as well, especially about the role of uh, residents in, uh, in planning. Uh, like uh, Almere says, people make the city. This is actually a lesson that could also be applied in a, a lot of other countries. Uh, the idea of top-down planning having to be um, nuanced by uh, other influences, uh, facilitating incremental growth and giving maximum possibilities and facilitating um, um, residence initiatives. So this is the kind of synergy between the cities of the program that we are looking for. Well, and then of course, um, uh, this um, uh, exchange of knowledge uh, will also be done by publications. We have, of our other conferences, also made uh, publications and we will also uh, do this of uh, this conference, uh, as well as of Cape Town. So this is also a way to um, get the, the knowledge uh, going and, um, and creating a new uh, level. So I would like to um, thank, well, first of all, our uh, sponsors for this uh, conference, the city of Almere, uh, the Stimulierings Fund for Creative Industries, and the, the Ministry of Economic Affairs for making this conference possible. And I would like to thank you for uh, being here and uh, participating in this ongoing event, because we will be working in uh, Shenzhen, hopefully for the next years also. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Um, just one little remark. What I understand, of course, will be a topic of today, the transition of existing old school, so to say, it, uh, uh, urban plans or uh, planning methods, so to say, and, and examples actually in search of, of, could you say, like like new generic models for planning older and newer new towns? Would that be a good conclusion? Is it is it is it is is it, a, is it a search for new generic models or are they all very specific? No, I think uh, the idea of a generic urban model is something that belonged to the 20th century mm -hmm. and that we should get rid of as soon as possible. Um, I do believe in um, um, creating uh, a method methodology and um, principles, but not in the uh, generic image that is being presented. And I think this is uh, very much due to um, well, this is kind of a, our professional uh, community uh, has uh, stepped back from the whole issue of urban planning in the last decades. And it has been taken over by um, huge engineering firms and more technical oriented firms. And I think the, the necessity for uh, um, us and um, for, for architects and planners interfering with urban planning again is very clearly proven by the the lack of quality in these uh, generic urban uh, visions. Okay. Thank you.